This short video demo shows highlights of an evolved deployment of Pivotal Cloud Foundry 1.5 on Mirantis OpenStack 7.0 in a scalable configuration designed for small-scale production. Implementers wishing to pursue similar deployments should download our runbook, Installing Pivotal Cloud Foundry on Mirantis OpenStack. The runbook is designed to complement Pivotal's own fast-expanding deployment document series for OpenStack IaaS. With Fuel's web UI, we can explore one of the high-efficiency OpenStack clusters we created to work with Pivotal Cloud Foundry. As we can see, the four server cluster comprises one controller deployed in HA configuration, but lacking the additional mirrors required for full HA operation, and three compute storage nodes, each with a Ceph OSD. The cluster as a whole gives us 36 physical cores in compute, which is ample to run the 64 vCPUs we need at deployment peak. It gives us 156 gigabytes of RAM in compute, which accommodates the calculated 175 gigabytes RAM we need at deployment peak with some oversubscription, and available storage, in this case SSD, to ensure solid Ceph performance in all modes is greater than the calculated 1260 gigabytes we'll need at peak. Fuel shows how we've set up our nodes with one controller and three compute Ceph. In the Storage Setting tab, we can see how Fuel has set our Ceph storage up by default. If we were using separate nodes for Ceph storage instead of combining storage with a compute function, we would have unchecked Ceph RBD for ephemeral volumes, permitting local storage on computes to be used for this purpose. On the Public TLS tab, you can see the only non-default setting we've made to this environment, turning off Fuel's standard choice of TLS for OpenStack public endpoints, because that would have required us to configure DNS to serve the cluster and obtain valid certificates. For a full production deployment, you should do this. Looking inside our deployed OpenStack cluster, we can see some of the preparations made to accommodate our Pivotal Cloud Foundry deployment. Here in the Glance image list, you can see Pivotal's Ops Manager distribution image and two stem cell images, one deployed to support Microbosh, the other required for VMs hosting elastic runtime components. On the Project Access and Security Security Groups tab, we can access the rules for the Ops Manager group that houses Pivotal components. To Pivotal standard rules, we've added an egress rule for all ICMP, letting Pivotal components use ICMP to prefetch IP addresses from DNS for its critical endpoints. On the instances display, we can see the Ops Manager VM launched and given the floating IP we'll use to access it via browser. In object storage, we see the PCF bucket used to store Ops Manager binaries, proof that we can configure Ceph to use Keystone authentication and work under OpenStack's S3 API. We used internal object storage for elastic runtime. The network layout for the project is impressive. Look at all those elastic runtime component VMs. Opening Ops Manager in a browser, we can look at configuration of the two tiles in our deployment, Ops Manager Director and Pivotal Elastic Runtime. Both tiles are green now because they're fully configured and deployed. Initially, they're color-coded orange. The first thing Ops Manager needs to know is the Keystone endpoint, which we can get along with other endpoints from Horizon's Access and Security API Access tab. Other basic info include the OpenStack Administrator or Project Min login and SSH key. On the Director Config tab, we've supplied Amazon Time Server URLs, and in this case, designated OpenStack as storage for binary blobs. Our runbook contains a tweak to enable this with Ceph as the storage backend. Information about the cluster project's networks are supplied under the Create Networks tab, the network name and ID, easily found in Horizon's Network tab, and IP addresses to exclude on the subnet. That's most of the configuration-specific details required. Pivotal's documentation covers a few other requirements, and then you're ready to click Apply Changes to Deploy. You can see the Ops Manager Director deployment logged here. When deployment completes, we're ready to configure Elastic Runtime, which has been uploaded to Ops Manager, and its tile added to the current deployment using left-hand controls. Under File Storage Config, we've selected Internal Object Storage this time, not the production choice, but it works fine too. Under Security Config, we're telling Ops Manager to generate self-signed certificates for Elastic Runtime instead of supplying formal wildcard certs of our own. Specifying the wildcard URL correctly here is important. It starts with star.system, and in our case uses the floating IP we've reserved to assign to Cloud Foundry's HA proxy load balancer entry point, and concludes with XIP.io which we're using instead of setting up our own wildcard DNS.
Under Cloud Controller Configuration, we supply what will be Cloud Foundry's system and apps subdomains, again constructing these around the HAProxy Entry Point IP and the Exit IO trailer. The most important tab, Resource Configuration, lets you scale your deployment in great detail, designating VM flavors used to host components, volume sizes, and critically, providing the HAProxy component with its designated floating IP, which becomes the subdomain entry point for all cluster operations. If you have some capacity overhead, you may wish to increase the number of compiler VMs to speed deployment. Our runbook contains a chart of recommended values for items enumerated on the Resource tab. Finally, the Stem Cell tab shows where we needed to download and then upload a Stem Cell prepared cloud image compatible with this version of Elastic Runtime. Once that's saved and the tile turns green, you're ready to return to the dashboard and click Apply Changes to deploy. The deployment of Elastic Runtime takes quite a bit longer than Ops Manager Director, up to two hours. Once deployed and smoke tests complete, it's time to log into your new Pivotal Cloud Foundry cluster. To do this via the Apps Manager web UI, obtain the Admin Credentials from Elastic Runtime's Credentials tab in the UAA section. Visit Apps Manager on the system URL console.system.domain. In our case, we use the HAProxy entry point IP plus XIPIO here and log in. You can create user accounts, domains, spaces, and administer system functions like scaling from this UI. Finally, go to a terminal and CF target, then CF login to your Pivotal Cloud Foundry. We've already logged into ours, so it remembers our cluster's target URL. Then to celebrate, you can CF push something simple like this little PHP application. Watch Pivotal Cloud Foundry identify the language, select the appropriate build pack, upload components, build the droplet container, and launch your app. Finally, you can test your app by visiting it on the supplied URL on your cluster's app subdomain.